Good morning. Welcome to worship here at Runnymede United Church. We continue our Jubilee June where we will be pre-recording parts of the service and allowing our uh, tech team and our leadership to have a bit of a break this month and a time of Sabbath and celebration of all that has been done and all that has been accomplished in the past months. We gather today on this day when many are celebrating Father's Day and for fathers out there, we wish you well today. As we begin our time of worship, we light our Christ candle. It reminds us of the light of Christ that burns in all of our hearts and lights up the world. As we gather and worship in light of so much that we're learning about in the past weeks, it is all the more important that we acknowledge the land that we worship upon here at Runnymede United Church. This land has been inhabited by people for thousands of years. And as we gather in this place to worship, we acknowledge that most, most recently, this has been the traditional territory of the Anishinaabeg, of the Mississaugas, of the Credit First Nations, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, the Huron-Wendat, and the Patoon First Nations. We pray that we will always be mindful of broken covenants and our need to strive and make right with all relations and all peoples in our country. And now, as we gather together, although we are apart, I invite you to pass the peace to one another, whether it's on your heart or through a text or a phone call. May the peace of Christ be with you all. And now we light our firm candle. We are celebrating Pride Month here at Runnymede. And our firm candle celebrates all the diversity that pride brings into our community. And it also reminds us of our ongoing work of being an affirming community. And now share our call to worship. Every sunrise marks a new beginning. It's a fresh start to a new day, a chance for healing and growing. We join in worship today with hope for new beginnings that are a part of our worship. We join in celebration for the ways that God heals and stretches us, and for the blessing of community. Wherever you are, thank you for answering God's call to worship and sharing this time together. Spirit, let us travel. 
Let us join now in our opening prayer. God, we pray for calm in our time of worship and give thanks for rest on the Sabbath. We give thanks that we are gathered as your people, led by the gifts of many to make our worship a time of peace and a time of challenge. We pray that we will be unsettled by the things you call to our attention and peaceful when you give us calm. We bring our sins and burdens to our shared time, lifting them up to you, praying that you receive our confessions and lift our burdens. We pray that our worship will be a time of affirmation and transformation. Bless our thoughts and words and surround us with the peace of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now as we continue to grow and stretch as a congregation, let us join in a celebration. Take courage, my soul, and let us journey up upon the night is dark, and I am far from hope or oh, home. Oh. Thanks be to God, the morning light of big begins. The storm is passing over. The storm is passing over. I'm Jocelyn Tharp, co-chair of Runnymede United Ministry and Personnel Committee. It's nice to be here this morning. I'm delighted to introduce Al Spence as our new youth leader at Runnymede. Al has just completed their second year of their BA in Religious Studies at York University. Al also studied acting and global theater at Regents University in London, UK. Al is a member of the United Church, their chair of the the Affirm Committee at Metropolitan United. They have a great deal of experience working with youth in Girl Guides, CGIT, and Drama Camp, and are looking forward to working with youth at Runnymede. Ale will work under the guidance of Reverend Ted, Ellen, our Family Outreach and Christian Education Leader, and our Faith Formation Committee. Welcome to Runnymede Ale. It's great to have you with us. Hello, my name is Ail Spence, and I'm the new youth leader here at Runnymede United Church. From working in theater in Britain, to performing here in Toronto, and even taking a pastry course, I have a varied background of skills to share with the community. As someone in discernment for ministry in the United Church of Canada, I'm really looking forward to sharing this part of my faith journey with you all. Having a background in film and theater, I know how important the experience of story is. We are all part of the great spiritual narrative of creation and moving forward in community enables us to share our stories and experiences. 
It is this act of sharing that we find strength to celebrate each other and ourselves within God's love. There are so many things that make each of us unique and loved, and Running Mead speaks to that in an inclusive way. I feel welcomed here and celebrated for who I am. Running Mead, I'm happy to be joining you. Let's have a fun journey forward together. Mark chapter 4, verses 35 to 41. Jesus has told the good news of the kingdom to the crowds in a way they could understand, but he has explained everything in private to his disciples. Now he shows the disciples that the power God has given him includes the ability to control the unruly forces of nature. Mark chapter 4, verses 35 to 41. Jesus stills a storm. On that day, when evening had come, he said to them, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great gale arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? The Gospel of Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Please join me in prayer. Loving God, source of wisdom, we open the holy texts to receive teaching and leading. We pray that you will illumine in us the message that you have for us this day. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be good and acceptable in your sight, our rock and our only redeemer. Amen. Now in Mark's Gospel today, our passage picks up after Jesus has been doing a lot of teaching. He's been doing a lot of teaching using parables. parables. He's addressed a large crowd on the shore of the lake. It's usually called the Sea of Galilee, but it is in fact a lake. To give some idea of dimension, the Galilee is similar in size and dimension to Lake Simcoe. And Jesus is beginning to draw large crowds of people who are traveling distances to hear him preach. And there are also a number of people coming to Jesus for healing and just to be in his presence. It is a busy time for Jesus. And he must have been a bit overwhelmed with all of the people clamoring for his attention. It seems understandable that Jesus might want to get away from the crowds. So that's where we begin in our reading today. Jesus has been teaching all day, first with all these crowds, then with his disciples. And then we hear that it's evening. And Jesus says, let's go across to the other side. And with that, the disciples, with Jesus in the boat and other boats around them, set off across the Galilee under the cover of night. Now, I like being on the water. I like being out in a boat. But there's a certain bit of nervousness that naturally, I think, rises when you set out in a boat at night. You can't see other boats if they don't have their lights on. You can't see if there are obstacles in the water. And your ability to navigate by sight is hindered when you can't see landmarks to orient yourself or to guide your path. And at this point in the passage, it kind of starts to sound like a cliche novel. It was a dark and stormy night. The scene takes a sharp turn. As they are starting out, Jesus is curled up on a cushion asleep at the stern of the boat. It could be that he was exhausted from teaching the crowds all day, or maybe the rocking motion of the boat lulled him to sleep. For whatever reason, Jesus is asleep as they sail into the darkness. 
And as they are sailing, the weather comes up. A storm surrounds them, and the waves begin to grow in size until they are overwhelming the boat, and it begins to be swamped. And with all of this tempest happening in the dark, Jesus is sound asleep on the cushion at the back of the boat. The disciples begin to panic, and I don't blame them. It's dark. They're far away from shore. They are disoriented without stars to guide them. The wind is howling. We don't hear mention of rain, but it seems likely that rain was pounding down or probably blowing straight sideways. And the boat is taking on water. Now, how many of you know someone who can fall asleep anytime or anywhere? Or someone who can sleep through anything? It's great for them. But as the world is swirling out of control, it isn't envy that you feel as you stare at their peaceful visage before finally yelling, wake up! The disciples are dealing with the storm. They're trying to keep the boat afloat and maintain some sort of direction to where they think they should be going. And while all of this is going on, Jesus is sleeping peacefully at the back of the boat on a cushion. And finally, sure, they are about to perish. They wake up Jesus. They ask him if he doesn't care that they are all about to die. Well, Jesus looks around and says, Peace, be still. And the sea is calm. The wind stops. And just as quickly as they thought they were all done for, all is calm and they are safe. Then Jesus said to them, why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? Now as terrifying as the storm was, it must have struck them cold to see Jesus able to command nature to see Jesus able to have control over the sea, the wind, a storm. It must have been awe-inspiring. Their jaws must have been hanging open. They had witnessed Jesus doing miraculous things. But to calm a storm and stop the waves, wow. Recall though, at the peak of the storm, Jesus is sound asleep on the cushion. Jesus' faith and belief in God was so strong and complete that Jesus was able to sleep through the storm without fear. As his disciples were fearing death, panicked, no doubt furiously bailing and trying to pilot the boat in the storm, Jesus is sound asleep. And when they wake him, he asks them, if they have no faith. I want you to consider an image. It's a quote attributed to Michael Caine. He said, be like a duck, calm on the surface, but always paddling like the Dickens underneath. And that seems to me how so many of us are treating our present situation in relation to COVID. I titled my sermon today, Pandemic Passage, because it seems to me that this passage speaks so well to our time right now. There is so much that should have us paddling furiously. The horror of children's bodies being discovered buried on the grounds of former residential schools. Racial injustice that is exposed and brought to light every day in our community and around the world. Our daily witness of the effects of climate change and our impact on the environment. Ongoing persecution and intolerance towards LGBTQ two-spirit people and trans people in our community and around the world political unrest, social upheaval, there is so much that should have us paddling furiously. 
But when it comes to COVID, I have to think if Jesus was right here with us on that one issue, Jesus would be curled up on a cushion at the back of the boat, sound asleep. Our news is filled with stories of people getting into arguments and fights. People getting killed over wearing or not wearing masks. So much angst about what every day is going to look like. Jesus would be curled up on a cushion, sound asleep. We're getting vaccinated. Things are reopening. Yes, it feels like it's been a long time. But restrictions are being lifted. Our ability to move around without fear of being infected or putting others at risk is getting less and less and less. It feels like a long time, but it is getting better. We are getting safer and following the leading of science and health professionals is getting us through the storm. Jesus would be sound asleep. It is the other things that are paddling furiously under the surface that we should be focused on and giving our attention to. So many things that were wrong before the pandemic and that have been made plain during it. Issues around justice, equality, common decency for all of God's people. Those are the things that should stir us to action. Those are the things that should wake us up from our cushions to join in the struggle. All of us are impacted by these issues to differing degrees. For some, it is a personal matter. For the rest of us, it is our call as children of God to know that what happens to one of us affects all of us. Jesus seemed to know the things he could control and the things that required action. When necessary, he flipped tables in the temple. He spoke for those who were not heard. He sat down with people on the margins. Jesus was not passive, but he used his energy and he kept his focus on people, things, and issues that needed attention. There is much that should stir us to action and have us paddling furiously. But when we are afforded care and direction, we should be calm. We should be calm and let God lead us to action where it's needed and provide us with comfort and security and rest at times as well. There are many storms for us to face, many challenges and tempests that surround us. But with God, there are also times when we can curl up on the cushion at the back of the boat and rest with the confidence that God is with us to protect us and watch over us. Amen. Awaken your love in me Let me feel what you feel Let me see what you see Help me look at the world differently Awaken your love in me Rekindle the hope in my heart Ignite glowing embers with your sacred spark Lift my thoughts out of the dark This changing world has challenged my dreams, has shaken my faith in love. So much anger has pushed us apart. It's time to heal us. Awaken your love in me. Let me feel what you feel. Let me see what you see Help me look at the world differently 
One of the ways we respond to the Word of God is to return a portion of the blessings that we receive from God to God for God's use. I want you to imagine the financial offerings that you make. And if you haven't made a financial offering, there are numerous ways that you're able to support the ministry of Runnymede United Church. If you support through PAR or sending in donations, we are grateful for those. And we are grateful for the support of the Mission and Service Fund of the United Church of Canada. We also acknowledge and give thanks and celebrate all of the time and talent that is given to support, sustain, and expand the ministry of this congregation. We imagine all of that here. We pray for God's blessing upon it. Gracious God, as we gather as your people, humbly we make our offering before you, and we pray that you bless and guide its use to further the work of your church in this world. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. And now we will offer the prayers of our community. And as we offer our prayer, I will leave space for you to lift the people and the places that you lift in prayer today. Let us go together to God in prayer. Creator, we give thanks for the gift of this day. We give thanks that we are safe and free to gather. We give thanks for changing seasons, for the dance of days and nights, the ebb and flow of light and dark, and the beauty that surrounds us and gives us life. We give thanks today for fathers and men of faith who are part of our lives and offer their goodness into the world. We pray for the healing of hurts and historical wrongs committed to indigenous people in our country. We celebrate the rich heritage of the indigenous peoples of Turtle Island. And we pray for dignity, respect, and access to all aspects of life that make life good for all of the people of Canada. Let us now offer the prayers on our hearts today. God, as we gather in safety and security, we pray for comfort for communities and families as the revelation of bodies buried on the site of residential schools continues. We pray for courage to acknowledge our shameful past and all who were a part of it. And we pray for the strength and resolve to be better. Give us strength, comfort and courage to not look away but to shine the light of Christ on wrong and grow to be better. As the season turns to summer, we pray for all who work on the land to provide for us, that they will receive the light, rain, and conditions to make their crops bountiful. We pray for young people, parents, teachers, support workers, and administrators as the school year nears its end. We pray that they have learned and been challenged despite a challenging year and that they celebrate together all that they have been able to achieve. We pray for the places in this world where people are living in peril. We pray for an end to war. We pray for food for the hungry. And we pray for shelter and hospitality for those who have been displaced. As we gather as a community of faith, we hold close to us those who are grieving. We pray for healing for those with health challenges 
and that all will feel safe and included in this congregation as they are without question or judgment. We offer our prayers as we say together the prayer our brother Jesus taught us to say. Holy God who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now I do have a couple of announcements to share with you. Just to reiterate and welcome Ale to our team here at Runnymede United Church. I hope that you will introduce yourself to them and get to know them better and make them feel welcome in this place. Thank you to all who participated in the North Country Meets fundraiser. $2,100 was raised to support the ministry of this congregation. As we are moving into our summertime, watch for details about Vacation Bible Camp that will be happening at the end of the summer. And as I've said before, our Jubilee June continues next week, but there is lots happening and lots that is being, uh, taking place in our community. There was a survey that went out about reopening and how people are feeling about it and, and when we will be doing that. We are carefully following with the guidelines that are being offered, so I encourage you to fill out that uh, survey that you've received. And now our closing hymn, Precious Lord, Take My Hand. we conclude our time of worship, which will conclude with a gift from Carl and in our choir singing a beautiful blessing written by David Ambrose, I offer you this commissioning and benediction. Go forth today or rest on the cushion at the back of the boat. Whatever you need today, lean in to God, knowing that God is always there. Christ is the light to guide you and the power of the Holy Spirit is the source of strength that can lift you and carry you through any challenge that you might face. Amen. May the 